So in this video, we're going to look at layer control. This for me in the very beginning was very confusing, but after some digging and trial and error, I managed to understand it a bit better. And with layer control and a bit of expressions, I created this kind of like a yellow caterpillar or something. Let's dive into After Effects and see how we could use layer control to manipulate layers and their properties. So I just need to set up a comp. So in this HD composition, I'm going to create two layers. I'm going to create two text layers. One is layer A and the other one is layer B. Let's make both of them a lot bigger and align them with the, with the comp. One thing to remember is when you create a layer control, you should always point the property of the same layer to the layer control. I'm gonna create a layer control in text layer B. Go to effect, expression controls, layer control. It's always pointing to another layer, which is the layer that you extract the data from. So I'm gonna select layer A. Say for example, I would like to take the source text from layer A. One way of doing it is to link the source text of layer B directly to the source text of layer A. And it works. This is absolutely fine when you're working with just a few layers. But imagine when you're working with a hundred layers. It's not that easy to pick whip between those layers. But with layer control, you could just pick with the properties to layer control, which is also in the same layer. So once you've linked it up, whatever you type in that A layer, it gets reflected in the other layer. Now for the next part of the demo, I'm gonna create a simple animation. There is nothing fancy here, so I'll just speed up this part. Okay, now I've created a very simple looping animation. By adding a loop out expression, I'll be able to loop this infinitely. What I would like to do, uh, just like I did in the example, is to have a lot of layers behind it so that it looks, you know, like a caterpillar. So to achieve that, what I need to do is to have a lot of layers following the same path, but they're offset by maybe a fraction of seconds. They should also be smaller than the layers above them. To do that, I could just simply copy a layer or duplicate this layer by pressing Control Command D. I press U twice to see all the keyframes. I could see everything was copied over. With layer control, I don't really need the keyframes and the expression. So I go ahead and delete them. Now you can see shape layer two is just a static layer. So next, I need to find a way to copy the position values from layer one to layer two. Again, just remember this, you always point a property of a layer to the layer control under the same layer. So in layer two, I'm gonna create a layer control. I'm gonna select layer one, meaning that we're gonna get the values from layer one. And because I want to copy the position properties, so I link this property of layer two to layer control in layer two. Once you have done that, you can see an expression has been added to it. But there's a small warning sign, meaning that the expression is incorrect or incomplete. So to complete this expression, we need to type in dot position. And as soon as you click somewhere else, you can see this property is taken into effect. It's the same position as layer one. Okay, that's great, but I don't want them to be exactly the same. I want some time offset between the two layers. So the next part of the expression is to type in dot value at time and time minus 0.1. So what this expression means is that we'll take the position values from layer one, but we'll offset it by 10% of the time. Now this is working, I could duplicate this layer, bring it down, go into the expressions and change it to say 0.2, and I could do with all the layers below, but that's gonna be a lot of work. Now let me just delete this layer. 
The smarter way to do it is to use the index number of that layer to drive the offset time. And the index number is just a small number before the layer name. To use the index number to drive this animation, what I'll do is I'll type in index. That gives you a value of two because the index number is two. So I'm gonna write down index minus one and then put them into brackets, then divide it by 10. So index is two, two minus one is one. One divided by 10 is 0.1. And you use time to minus 0.1, that gives you a 10% time offset. Next is to test this expression by duplicating this layer. It seems working even if I copy more layers. Next, I want the layers below to be smaller than the layers above them. So I'm gonna just undo until I only have layer two and I'm gonna pick whip the scale property to layer control. Just like before, the expression is incomplete, so we just need to manually type in the scale properties. So dot scale, and again here, I'm gonna use the index to drive the value incrementally. So index is two, and I'm gonna times five, that gives you 10. Make sure you put them into brackets, and then I'm going to use 100 to minus the value of 10. That gives you 90, and I just divide it by 100. So the end number of that is 0.9. And when scale multiplied by 0.9, that means it's 90% of the scale of the layer above. So did I make a punctuation mistake? I used a comma instead of a full stop. You should always use a full stop in your expressions. So once I've corrected it, it seems working. After that, I've just gone crazy on Ctrl D to duplicate as many layers as I like. And that's how you get this yellow caterpillar. So that's all about this expression control tutorial. Just a reminder, you should always put the properties to the layer control effect under the same layer. You should always point to another layer which you want to extract the data from. If you find this tutorial useful, please give me the thumb up. Really interested in seeing what you come up with with this layer control effect. Leave a comment if you have any questions and do subscribe to my channel for future updates. Thank you and see you.